Now alfalfa seed's a whole different story. Because what we're doing there is we're irrigating this crop up and we want to maximize seed production. So we don't cut it for forage. We start it out and we're stimulating it to grow maximum. And then about middle of the early to middle part of summer, we start taking the water away or totally take the water away from it and force it to go to seed. We want it to go to seed. And so we trick that plant into thinking we're going to kill it. And in the process of it thinking it's going to die, it's going to try to propagate itself to the maximum. And so it tries to set as much seed as it possibly can. And so what's happening with that crop is the consumptive use is going to be down here and it's going to, it'll work its way up pretty rapidly. In fact, it would come up just as rapidly as this other guy. It should be right in here. It's going to be just like this forage here. And then all of a sudden, we shut her down and we quit watering in here. There's a point in here where we stop watering. We stop irrigation. And it quits raining that time of the year in this area. And now that plant goes into decline. And then out here when it's time to harvest, they actually defoliate it. And so it drops clear down here almost to nothing. We go in and harvest it. Immediately after harvest, pour the water to it. Oh, I'm going to live again. So it takes off and starts growing. <coughs> Until it hits the end of its, uh, when the freeze has come and it kind of goes into dormancy again. So this would be a curve for alfalfa seed. So, but you're totally stopping irrigation. So about in here and so it's just using up all those soil reserves uses it all up and by the time you get out here it's virtually used up all that soil water reserve we've taken out all that available water yeah so we're just stressing the heck out of that crop by the time we get out here to early September we have put that crop through hell and then we harvest it, and then we just pour the water to it, and it goes, oh, I'm going to live. And it takes off, and away it goes again. It's kind of handy because you don't have to water during the middle of the summer. So if you have depleted water reserves, it's a crop that can be grown with seasonal water. And that's why they grow a lot of it in this valley, because there are a lot of acres that they would love to irrigate, but don't have full season water ability. Uh, it's just not available. We're a little water short in the valley. So you know how they use those cutter bees to pollinate them? And they, and they strip the foliage off, the bees do, and then they make those little, they step the mm -hmm. stuff. How does that affect the plant and irrigation and all that? Well, the question is, does the leaf cutter bees effect on the leaves of the plants have much effect on the overall production? The leaf cutter bees probably use an infinitesimal amount of foliage oh, yeah. in that process, yeah. Yeah, they don't, it would be non-consequential to the plant itself. So that, it's kind of the similarity, the dissimilarities of the two kinds of alfalfa that we grow in this part of the world. Same, it could be the same exact variety, just two very radically different outcomes. One for forage, one for seed. So all you sprout lovers, you know, you got to have your seed. Plus it's also used for reproduction of new crops of alfalfa. <laughs>